What is up, gents? Dirtbag Gaming, the channel for Casual Raiders. We're going over the Shadowkin Crypt today. So we're gonna do a two-part guide. First part is going to be um, going over the champions that I think are gonna be good for the Shadowkin. Uh, it's already out, we already finished it. Um, so definitely, we're gonna go over a lot of champions that are gonna be good, what I used, and also my suggestions on champions that I don't have that you might have. So we're gonna go over that first, and then the second guide is me gonna uh, do the actual um, probably the last two stages because once you get up to stage 20 and stage 21 You're gonna be farming stage 20 and then stage 21 obviously do it once never have to do it again unless you're doing uh, uh, Faction Wars not Faction Wars um, Clan vs Clan But first let's go over uh, Shadowkin them as a whole are probably one of the if not the best champion champions looking in the game so they just all look Fantastic. We don't have every every single one of them. We do have all of them but the new uh, legendary that just came out and or epic and then we're missing a bunch of legendaries. But they just keep coming out with more and more so we don't even have time uh, to do it. We did luck out. Everybody has a free ninja. Um, if you did join within the first, you know, I guess, I don't know if you get it now. If you, if you join now, you might get ninja. Who the hell knows? Uh, but let's go over it from bottom to top. So it's gonna be a little bit longer video because we're gonna go over each champion and if you're going to be using them in the faction wars specifically not anywhere else in the game mainly faction wars and if you can level them up to 50 and get away with it which i have done plenty of times uh but let's go into it so first we'll start with the uncommons so this guy conscript i'm not pro i'm gonna i'm not gonna pronounce the names i really don't care attacks one enemy two times and attacks one enemy at 50 percent chance place a weekend so we're gonna skip this guy don't don't need him let's go to this guy uh, sometimes there are rares or uncommons that are good. Attack one enemy, has one enemy two times, each hit has a 50% chance of placing a 2.5% poison debuff for two turns. Not the best. Actually, let me pause this for you guys. So it'd be good to know what you're dealing with. So let's go over the boss, uh, because if there are champions that you don't really need, like to CC one of them or uh, block revive, stuff like that. So this boss literally just hits you really freaking hard. Um, he has the just ignore defense, just one shot, kill everybody. So he does the attacks one enemy, will ignore targets defense just innately, uh, increases damage based on enemy max HP and attack. So remove all, so you definitely want to attack down, obviously. Remove all debuffs from this champion, places a true fear debuff on a random enemy for one turn and place a stun on all enemies except that champion. So having a block buff will definitely be good. Fills so champion to him by 2% for it. So he's gonna be going really fast uh, as you kill him and immune to stun, freeze, sleep. All right, so this again, champion, if you've seen him before, he just hits really freaking hard. He puts out stuns on everybody uh, and true fears. So you're gonna want somebody with block block uh, buffs, you want somebody with ally protection, um, remove buffs, uh, and to just bring the DPS as much as possible. That's basically this guy's a DPS race. Not race, but like <laughs> you wanna hit kill him probably in one or two turns and survive. Okay, so that is the boss. Let's go back to the champions. I just guys, I just wanna tell you what, what you're facing because if you're going in this blind, it's not good. Like you're like, all right, what boss am I gonna see? Well, that's the boss. So let's go back to the index. Let's go to our Shadkin, Shadowkin, Uncommon, Skip. Let's go to Res. There's a couple of Res you guys can use. So we're gonna go with uh, Support. So again, I'm looking for Decrease Attack, um, Increase Turn Meter, Heal, Revive, anything that's really gonna be good for Faction Wars. So 30% chance to increase Defense, it's not an AoE. I'm looking for the debuffs as well. That's what, that's what we're really looking for. Um, transferring two RAM debuffs, don't really care, uh, and don't care about this. So we're gonna skip over the Fanatic. I don't know why I keep going out. Uh, this chick is ugly as all hell. Uh, attacks one enemy, puts asleep. Block buffs, don't care. Decrease attack, don't care. This guy, provoke, don't care. Um, attacks all enemies. So there's a minimum 25% uh, decrease attack. So if this is one of the guys you have, you can definitely use this guy. So 50, 60, 75% chance on a three turn cooldown and put a decrease attack. That's fine. Uh, and placing stun. So this guy could be one of the people, if you're newer, to use. We're gonna go over like if w what type of the game. If you're newer, use this guy. If not, you can skip this guy. I've never seen this dude. So this guy's new. Uh, puts a leech, so isn't isn't bad for the boss. Uh, chance to increase fifty percent of attack is critical. It's fine. Attacks all enemies. Decrease speed is good. Um, fifty percent chance to decrease speed also increases 
speed of this champion by two turns if attack's critical, okay. Uh, they have a lot of attack champions. Decreases the enemy max HP by 30% of damage. Okay, so this guy isn't bad. He just only does the decreased speed. And Leech. Leech is good. So he's a maybe. I would skip him for now. Defense is great, but he does ignore all the defense. The boss. So provoke. Um, place a shield buff on this champion for two turns equal to 20% of their max HP. That's a huge shield. <clears throat> place a block buffs. Debuff on all eyes for one turn. That's great. It's a 5, 4, 3 turn cooldown. Also place a 30% decrease. Uh, increase. So this is good <clears throat> to have when he does the stun on everybody. And the true fear. So this is a good one to have. This guy is very good. Um, being able to time. So make him really fast. And a lot of HP. But this is really good to time the A2. A3. So there you go. There's one guy that's going to be good for this boss. Odachi. Blood Mask, I saw when, I, when he first came out. I thought he was really good. Let's go over him. Zach's one of me. 30% chance to decrease the target turn meter. So I I didn't read if he has, uh, if you can increase his turn meter, you might be able to. Decrease speed, which is great. And stun. <clears throat> 5, 4, 3 turn cooldown on a stun. 100% chance of placing it. That's not bad. Decrease speed and decrease turn meter. So he's not bad uh, for bosses because bosses hate decrease speed. And decrease turn meter and stun would be good for the waves. So he's he's a maybe. Assassin. Uh, poison. Decrease turn meter of all debuffs on enemy for one turn. Increase duration, uh, whatever, and then weaken. So he's a speed in all battles. So he's not bad. Um, he's like a ninja turtle, but he, he's a he's he's a pass. Life taker. Text one of me two times. Uh, place heal reduction, which we don't we don't need. Attacks one of me three. So this guy, this chick is perfect for uh, uh, Fire Knight. Uh, attacks one of me three times. Each has a 50% chance to decrease target turn meter by 10%. 30 has a 50% chance of placing a decreased speed, which is great. So three hitter on the Fire Knight, perfect. And then puts a, a veil and a reflect damage, which again is good for the Fire Knight. So she's made for the Fire Knight. Uh, I mean, if this is up, so it's a veil on her, so she's not probably going to get hit by the boss. All right, so those are the rares. The the maybe was this guy, or no, this guy. So he's probably the best rare for this boss. Let's go to over the epics. So there's a lot of good epics uh, in Shadowkin that'll be good for you. I would definitely 100% use Ninja, um, but let's go over the epics. So this one I haven't seen yet. Fucking badass, like always. A little mask on, on her side. She looks so cool. Okay. Text one enemy. Oh, this is great. So decrease accuracy is going to be awesome for bosses like this because of the true fear, which I don't know if you read if it could be um, resisted, but 50% decrease accuracy is insane for bosses. Text one enemy three times. Each hit has a 100% chance of placing a 5% poison. Wow. Wow. Very good. Uh, text one enemy has 70% chance of instantly activating any poison debuff and HP burn debuff on the target. Also, as I, wow, this chick is insane. Wow, okay, she's very freaking good. She's a girl, right? I think she's a girl. Could be a guy. I don't know. Taya, I mean, it's a girl. Okay, so um, very, I think she could be a very hard-hitting uh, debuffer for this boss. I don't have her. But if I did, I would probably level her up for either clan boss. Yes, 100% clan boss. Uh, accuracy in all battles by 50 is huge. Freaking Drexar Blood Twin, who's a legendary, gives you 70. All battles by 50. That is insane. Wow. Okay, yeah, so she's she's definitely very good. I would, I would definitely use her. Jembo, very good. Uh, he's a good DPS, so he just basically does as much DPS as possible. He does two turns. He increases all out uh, in arena, so don't need that. But immune to decrease attack, will ignore and killable debuffs, and uh, when attacking under increase. Okay. So I don't think you have to worry about that. But he does hit really hard. So if you have already have a Jembo and you probably leveled him up and you probably use him in PvP, he wouldn't be a bad option for this boss, just to do as much damage, and on the waves, as much damage as possible. So steals any increased attack buffs. So that's good if he puts out an increased attack. Attacks all enemies 80% chance decreasing all buffs by one turn. 
and just buffs up himself and then hits really freaking hard. So again, Jembo is very good uh, in PvP um, and can be very good. He cut off his wings and can be very good in this boss. So Jembo is good. Uh, Obora is definitely a very good. She was mentioned a lot in Hydra when you could first do like unlimited turns with Hydra, but she also is good if you leveled her up. Uh, she attacks one enemy, 40% chance of placing a decreased defense, which is great. Will attack all enemies instead if they're under four or more debuffs. So if you attack somebody, um, we'll attack all enemies instead if the target is up. So if you have one target that you're attacking who's under four or more debuffs, she'll then attack everybody as an AoE on her A1, which is great. Uh, she's very hard to kill too. Test one of me two times, second hit has the 75% chance, which is 100% chance of de uh, transferring all debuffs from this champion to the target. Um, stealing all buffs from the target while under Veil of Perfect Veil. Places a increased crit rate, crit damage on this champion for two turns, then attacks one enemy, places a Perfect Veil on the champion for two turns if the attack is critical, which you probably will be, it's on a three turn cooldown. Passive revive on death, which is always good. So anytime you're doing trying to do a three star on anything, revive on death is great. Increase ally attack and dungeon, so it doesn't matter. So she's good. She has a great AoE. Increases her own buffs and puts a perfect veil, which then she won't be targeted for the boss. Boom, there you go. So she could be she could be reliable uh, as a DPS for this boss. Masamoto looks freaking badass. It's like the white power ranger <laughs> as a ninja. That's pretty cool. Uh, attacks one enemy two times, 10% chance of stealing. Attacks all enemies, 50% chance of placing. So there's your decreased attack on all enemies. Oh, he's a defense type champion. That is awesome. This attack ignores defense, but defensive champions are awesome. So attack all enemy on a three turn cooldown. And this one, Plays increased defense on all allies for two turns. Also fills the just Oh, wow. That's really good. All right. So this guy's awesome. Yes, this guy's very good. Defensive by champion. Increased turn meter. Increased defense. Uh, six, five, four turn cooldown. Decrease attack on everybody. So you guys are getting hit less. Like having this on the boss, you don't even notice the uh, the big hit. Like decreased attack and ally protection. It, it's such a good combo. This guy I kept uh, for the fusion because I had two of them. He just looks amazing, but uh, he's an HP type champion, which are always good. So tax one to me, there you go. Tax one to me, 45% chance of placing a decreased attack on the A1. Plays a shield buff on the champion for two turns, equal 25% of the max HP. Then attacks one enemy, plays a provoke debuff. If the target's max HP is equal or lower the champion, provoke debuff cannot be resisted. Wow, that's awesome. Tax one to me will ignore 25% target's defense. Also ignoring killable and block damage. Uh, we'll receive 25% less damage from enemy attacks when this champion's HP. Okay, that's really good. And HP and all battles. But okay, so this guy is definitely good. So he's got your decreased attack uh, for the boss um, on the A1. He has a, a really good passive if he does get targeted. He can uh, ignore damage, so he can probably hit hard. Uh, and he puts a shield on himself on a three turn cooldown. So this guy could definitely be good. He could be a decreased attack champion for the boss. And he's HP, so he's got a lot of HP. Goro came out pretty early. It's all about freezing. It's good for the waves, not good for the boss. Yeah, not good for the boss. Block buffs. Weaken. Um, yeah, I would ignore her. This chick I'd probably ignore as well. Weaken, leech. Okay, maybe not, because I always suggest the ally protect on this boss because of the really hard hit. So she is a defensive type champion, which she doesn't look like it. Um, places a 50% ally protect on all allies except this champion for two turns. Fill this champion to but by 50%. Wow. 654, three turn cooldown. Wow, three turn ally protect and plays a block damage buff on the champion for a turn. Wow, okay, so she is great for this boss. Yes, very good for this boss because she takes the damage and she puts out this on a five turn cooldown. Block damage buff on the champion for one turn whenever the HP drops below 50%. Perfect, perfect for this boss. Make her super, super fast. Put out a leech on the boss. Um, weaken if, if you can, but really you're gonna bring her in for this specific skill um, and she won't die because of this. So she could be very, very good for this boss. 
this dude everybody talks about shield strengthen on your entire team stun attack all enemies for so very very good uh provoke on the a1 heals chain but by 50 percent of the max hp whenever ever an ally or an enemy dies that's pretty good this guy's a good soloer but we can all allies shield buff for two turns on all allies less than 50 percent hp shield buff equal to 50 percent so if the allies have less than 50 percent hp puts a shield buff on them him i would probably skip but he'd be good for cc for the waves i mean he's he's okay not not my top people for this decrease speed on the a1 and poison so i'd probably skip this guy he, he would probably die too fast this chick i think is a rezzer yeah revise a random ally 30 percent hp whenever the, the champion kills an enemy so she can be good for the ways if like your people die like she can actually kill somebody and res somebody back up increase attack on everybody uh decrease crit rate which is good and a leech on the target and decrease accuracy so she could be good i actually would use her for the, for this boss just because you have that res uh, you have decreased accuracy uh so the true fears and the stuns i mean it stuns i don't know if you could be resisted but um and then the decreased uh crit rate and the leech so she she's she's a support so probably relentless set on her uh we're still in the epics so we have this chick is new i haven't seen her yet text one of me two times has an additional 20 percent chance of inflicting critical hit doesn't matter doesn't matter uh perfect veil increased speed on all allies on this champion completely blocks one whenever this champion is attacked okay when attacked by a boss decreases the income damage by 50 percent. okay so she is going to take 50 percent less damage of that big hit on a four three two turn cooldown that's not bad Hmm. Okay, so I would give her as much speed and attack as possible. We ignore twenty percent target defense and just twenty percent inflicting critical hit. Yeah, I would. Okay, so she could be a damage dealer, definitely. Like almost like a, a the whisper chick from uh, Knights of Revenant, the chick that like just goes multiple times, real in boost your own turn meter stuff like that. She has rope. She has rope everywhere. <laughs> yeah. oh, she is a freak. Um, increase ally crit rate and all battles by 15%. Not bad. But this passive is probably why you're going to bring her. On a two turn cooldown. Like you're going to ignore 50% of the damage taken. Um, and you counterattack with your default skill. Yeah. So she's not bad. But she could be used. For, the, for this boss specifically. This chick has poison sensitivity, HP burn, increases 50%, plays a 50% increase attack and increase, increase attack buff on the shaping for two turns and attacks when he plays HP burn. So that's awesome, that's really good. Attacks all enemies, has 50% chance to decrease in duration all debuffs. And immune to decrease accuracy, Increases this champion's crit rate by 0.05% every point of accuracy they have. Yeah, so she's she's all about placing buffs, like increase her own accuracy, putting out the HP burn, decreasing the duration of all debuffs, like not made for this boss. But she seems really cool. Like really weird stats. This guy was cool since the beginning. Puts a leech on the A1, decrease attack on the A2, attacks all enemies, increase defense, continuous heal, so he's your healer. Uh, removes one random debuff from this champion at the start of each turn. We'll remove stun, sleep, fear, true fear. Yeah, that's awesome. So this guy is perfect for this boss. I, I leveled this guy up to 50 or something um, when he first came out because he's a def defensive set champion, defense in all battles with 25%, and heals your team on a three turn cooldown, decreased attack on an AoE, and leech. So yeah, this guy is going to survive and have your team survive so freaking much. So this guy is very, very good. If you have him, love him up. He's definitely going to help you out with this boss a lot. 
and this guy is going to be the MVP. So I love this guy at 60. Um, I wanted him for the clan boss, but <clears throat> decrease attack on the A1. Provoke uh, attacks on enemies, 50% chance to place and provoke. So very good for the waves, like instantly good for the waves. Uh, increase by 5% for each debuff on the enemy team. He has a ally protect, which again for this boss is clutch. Shield on himself and reflect damage for three turns on a three turn cooldown. The heal is increased by 2.5% for each poison. He has a passive that puts a poison on the attack for two turns every hit that he takes. And a resistance all about. So this guy is definitely MVP. He's going to be, if you have him, love him up, put him up to 60. He can be used in a lot of different places, but he is going to be your MVP for this boss. So freaking good. So good for this boss. Just give him as much HP as possible. All right, so now we're in the legendaries. So I think if you have any legendaries, you can use them. I have Genzo, I didn't use him. Like I used really epics more, because um, I, I don't know where I would use them besides this place. Yoshi, I have three Yoshis. <laughs> yeah, I think he was a fusion. But uh, he is definitely somebody that I would level up to 60. Uh, he could be used in a lot of different places. I don't have him booked out, but his skills are very, very good. Ninja, put him in your clan boss. He's, he's definitely one of the best champions in the game, damage dealer-wise. Uh, good for waves, good for this boss, does a shit ton of damage. So very, very good. And then I had Rio, which I love up at 60 because she's freaking awesome, but she's not needed. Uh, she just gives a lot of buffs, block buffs, all this stuff on one skill, puts out a continuous heal, um, and she can't be placed uh, buffs, debuffs. So those are the legendaries I have. So again, if you have any other legendary and you want to use them, just use them. But let's go over them anyway. So... Yumeko, 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 uh, attacks one of me two times, uh, steals, turn meter, each hit heals the champion by 30% of the damage inflicted, wow, so built-in life steal. it's pretty cool, uh, she looks like the nine tails, two, four, five tails, um, attacks one of me, 80% chance of placing a hex, okay, so definitely, probably, uh, Hydra, decreases the cooldown of of all ally skills by three turns and increase the cooldown of all enemies. What? So, so Kaimar, that is insane. Will not decrease the cooldowns of the champion's skills. Okay, that's still really cool. Seven, six, five turn cooldown on that. Yeah, she's freaking fun. Place a perfect veil buff on the champion by two turns, start of each round. Wow. Champion's immune of all debuffs while they're under the veil, perfect veil, and pairs with this guy, Fox Hunter. This chick's cool. I don't, I don't know if she'd be the best for... Yeah, she won't be good for this boss, but... Yeah. <laughs> Whoa, this guy looks... What? He killed a demon and stole his hand. Looks freaking phenomenal. Alright. Attacks only transfers a random debuff from the champion to the target. Block active skills. Decrease accuracy isn't bad. Decrease crit damage isn't bad. Um, immune to fear. True fear. Okay, that's good. Um, freeze, provoke, sleep, stun. Alright, so this guy's great for this boss. So, he's immune to basically all the stuns. He can decrease the accuracy and crit damage and puts a strength on, on people. Um, he has ally HP in all battles by 30. He's an HP type champion. Oh my god. 23,000 HP. 103 base speed. This guy is phenomenal. This guy is awesome. Yeah, this guy's really, really cool. So yeah, he would be very good for this boss. We are already, whenever she just buffs up everybody, um, heals your team, and can't be uh, debuffed, so she's very good for this boss. Uh, Kate, all right, so this is, this is the pair guy. <laughs> Fox Hunter, she here, 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 has a tail. He looks cool. So, text one of me, place a weaken, uh, place a stun for two turns, grants an extra turn, and resets the cooldown and skill of Yemeko. Block buffs. All right, so yeah, I would skip him. Jamarin, block skills, buff spread, true, yeah. All right, so I would skip this guy. She looks awesome. Uh, weaken, decrease attack, HP burn, so good. And all right, so yeah, she's perfect for this boss. Block damage, ally protect. Uh, increase defense every time the champion is hit with a critical hit uh, heals all allies by 15% uh, 
of the max HP, then places the CSP. Wow. So that's why I see this chick all the time in uh, PvP. Yeah, she's a insane 1500 base defense. Wow. She's fantastic. Genzo, uh, three times, decreased defense, and that's really it. So that's probably why I didn't use him. Yeah, I wouldn't use him. This guy looks cool. He's got like snakes in his eyes. Monkey dude. Alright, uh, attacks one of me, 40% chance of decreasing the duration of two random debuffs on the target. Oh wait, fear and true fear. Under, if the target is under fear or true fear. So you can't put that on the boss. Um, is he immune to fear or true fear? What are the ally? Fully depleted by the champion. Place a, as a puts true fear out, but yeah, you don't really need him for this boss. Yoshi, again, I use him for the boss because he does... Uh, HP burn, decrease accuracy, and increase attack, increase accuracy uh, on your guys. But his passive fills champion's hair by 4% each time an enemy receives a buff. But right here, LA is speed and all battles by 19%. So you can use him as your speed lead. Uh, I think that's the only reason why I use them. Yeah, he's 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 not bad. He's 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 good, but he's not needed. Good, not needed. Ninja, already went over. Everybody should have him. Um, use him, level up to 60. Phenomenal champion. Lady Kimmy, also very, very good. She, she, she has a speed in Doom Tower, which this isn't Doom Tower, um, but she can remove one random uh, buff from each enemy. 70% chance of placing a block buffs. Increase accuracy, increase speed. There you go. Um, decrease accuracy, decrease speed. Highest term meter will attack the same enemy twice. If initial attack is high, higher term meter, second check. The attack the enemy with the highest term meter. Okay, that's fine. Passive, whenever the champion places a debuff on the enemy, also decreases the enemy term meter by 5%. Yeah, so she's she's phenomenal. She's really good. 115 base speed. Probably the fastest in the game. And looks phenomenal. Junto. Juntoro. Grants an extra turn to kill somebody. Steals 100% target's turn meter. So that's good if you can steal his turn meter. Uh, this, this would be good because you steal and then go again. Uh, decrease defense and weaken. All turn meter fills effects are increased by 50% when using this champion. Or decrease or increased? Increased by 50%. All battles with 29%. So he could be good if you can steal the, the turn meter. Yeah, he's probably really good for some Doom Tower bosses. Wow. Okay, so that guy's really good. Uh, that's it. Wow. Okay, so that's all the legendaries. Let's go back to the boss and see if you can actually turn meter manipulate him. Because if you can, some of these champions are actually going to be used more than the other ones. So we'll go to Faction Wars. The boss. And then we'll click this little boss guide. All right, so he's immune to stun, freeze, sleep, provoke, block, active skill, block, passive skill, fear, true fear, uh, petrification, debuffs, also immune to HP exchanges, affects HP bounce, and cooldown increasing effects. So not immune to cooldown decreasing effects. Oh, cooldown increasing effects. Okay, but he's not immune to... Um, cooldown, uh, the fucking turn meter, whatever it's called. So he's not immune to turn meter, which is good. So you can actually use a lot of the champions that reduce uh, the turn meter of this champion and be good. So remove all debuffs from this champion. So the poisons aren't really going to matter too much. Place a true fear buff uh, debuff on a random enemy for one turn, then place a stun debuff on all enemies except this uh, except that enemy for one turn. These debuffs cannot be resisted. So, all right, so decreased accuracy and resistance isn't going to be huge for this, but the block buffs is. Because the block buffs, you can obviously just ignore all this. So the block buffs is going to be huge. Ally protect is going to be huge. Uh, decreased speed, nice. Decreased speed, huge. So those are going to be the ones that this boss definitely wants to not see. Uh, we'll ignore uh, target's defense. So again, definitely want to have a, a ally protect. 
and that, that's really it. So the boss is, is pretty simple um, to get through. What are the teams of the week? A lot of epics, any epics? So Ninja is almost used in every single one of them. Genbo or Genbo hits really hard. Um, this guy probably hits really hard. That's why everybody's using him. Three, four, five. So this guy again seals the terminator, so that's good. Ninja, uh, Fox Hunter, this guy, Genbo. Genbo, her, Ninja. Let's look up that guy again because I'm curious on why everybody's using him. Probably because he hits really freaking hard. Uh, that's honestly why. I don't have him. So, oh, I do have him. Let's go into the actual. All right, so we got to Genzo. So, attacks one or three times each hit fills ter term meter by 6%. Attacks all enemies, 100% uh, chance of placing a Duke's defense. Each critical hit fills the champion's turret. So, he's just all about term meter manipulator or to go as fast as possible. He's 100 base speed, which is good. Attacks one enemy will ignore unkillable and shield buffs. Fills champion turn me by 30%, fills champion by 30, 60% instead if the target has 50% HP or less after this attack. Uh, also decreases the cooldown, uh, that doesn't matter. Steal if he kills an enemy, okay. And then passive, it increases the champion speed by 10 and resistance by 50 if the number of champions on this champion's team is equal or lower the number of enemies. All right, so that won't really... Oh, this effect always works when fighting bosses. So increases this champion speed by 10 and 50. If the number so increase by 10 speed, 50 resistance. But he's literally all about turn meter. So he probably attacks insanely fast. Maybe relentless that would be really good for this guy. Uh attacks. Or honestly, the uh the one where you increase your turn meter as your HP decreases. Uh, that would probably be really good on this guy too. But yeah, that's probably why they, they use this guy because he just is super fast and he probably hits really freaking hard. 1500 base attack, attack type champion, and ignores. Nope, that's it. Ignore and kill a bunch of shield. That's it. Cool. So, alright, so that's probably why everybody uses Jensen. But that is my uh, Shadowkin updated on three let's say it's day three three 2022 uh let me know what you guys think was this a good suggestion guide i think there's a lot of good epics i mean the frog guy is, is perfect uh ninja is perfect and then really any other defensive block buffs will be fine and ninja could probably do all the damage himself honestly so that's basically what i would do um let me know what you guys think put in the comments below but also join discord uh, there's a lot of awesome dudes in there and I'm gonna make another video on specifically just Shadowkin the champions I used uh, Their gear stats all the fun stuff and then we'll go from this so guys appreciate it Good luck with everything and we'll see you in that video soon because we're gonna be recording it tonight. So